Hello again, and welcome to lesson five of our phases of matter unit. Before we get too far into gases, we're going to return one last time to liquids and look at the liquid to gas transition and the understanding of what we call vapor pressure. This is particularly useful now that we have an understanding of what pressure is and how the atmosphere exerts a pressure. In case you're not clear on that, you might want to go back to our last discussion and review on that before we move on. In order to understand vapor pressure, you should think about a liquid put into a sealed container. If we take a liquid and we put it into a sealed container, we're going to find that individual particles of that liquid will, on occasion, become gas through the process of evaporation. Because it's a sealed container, this can't continue forever. We're going to reach an equilibrium point where the number of particles that become a gas are equal to the number of particles becoming a liquid over any time interval. If you consider what the gas mixture looks like in this hypothetical construction, you're going to see that it's at a higher pressure than it was when we started. When we started, we just had the particles of the atmosphere as the gas, but now we've got the particles of the atmosphere and the particles of the substance that had become a gas mixed together in the atmosphere of our sealed container. The particles of the substance that have become a gas are what we call the vapor, and the pressure that that vapor exerts in that closed container is what's called the vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is going to be related to how easily the particles of that liquid can become a gas and how many of them will exist as a vapor at particular conditions. The weaker the intermolecular attractive forces are in that substance, the more particles will exist as a vapor at any particular temperature within our closed container. Substances that evaporate easily and contribute more particles to the overall atmosphere of whatever they're in are described as volatile substances. You've probably seen this term used in other places, maybe on things like the warnings that go on bottles of compressed liquids like hairsprays and things like that. It's important to understand this relationship that the more vapor particles there are from a particular substance, the more pressure those particles of vapor will be exerting, so the higher the vapor pressure. We use reference table H to investigate the relationship between different liquids and their vapor pressures at particular temperatures. Reference table H is going to show us four different liquids, propanone, ethanol, water, and ethanoic acid. Each of these substances has a different vapor pressure. When we consider the relationships between these four substances, we see that at any particular temperature, propanone will always have the highest vapor pressure, followed by ethanol, followed by water, followed by ethanoic acid. So going from propanone through ethanoic acid, we can describe the relationship as follows. The intermolecular attractive forces of the substance are increasing, and so as a result, there's a decreased volatility, which leads to a decreased vapor pressure. You should be able to figure out the vapor pressure for any one of these four liquids at any particular temperature shown on this graph. Now that we have some understanding of vapor pressure, we can actually understand why things boil. Boiling is just defined as the mass transition from the liquid to the gas phase. This happens anytime the vapor pressure equals or exceeds the atmospheric pressure that the liquid is under. Once that vapor pressure equals or exceeds the atmospheric pressure, there's no force pushing on the liquid, keeping the particles in the liquid phase. And so every particle in the substance is essentially able to transition into the gas phase. This will continue until all of the particles have become a gas and looks like the classic boiling that you probably are familiar with. There are two ways to boil a substance. The first is just to heat the substance up. What you're doing there is increasing the vapor pressure of the substance until such point as the substance's vapor pressure equals or exceeds the atmospheric pressure. This is what we'd call the normal boiling point, which is the temperature at which the substance boils at standard pressure, one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals. The other way that we could boil a liquid is simply to lower the atmospheric pressure until that pressure is equal to the liquid's vapor pressure at whatever temperature we happen to be at. Reference table H shows us the relationship between the vapor pressure and the temperature of the boiling point for those four substances. And the normal boiling point is shown to us as a dashed line on the graph, which makes our life a lot easier if we have to figure out what the boiling point is under standard atmospheric pressure. Thanks for watching our discussion of vapor pressure and why liquids boil. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end of this lesson. Make sure that you can explain what vapor pressure is and relate it to a substance's intermolecular attractive forces. Make sure that you can describe the relationship between vapor pressure and atmospheric pressure that allows liquids to boil or keeps them from boiling at particular temperatures. And finally, make sure that you can interpret and use reference table H. Can you figure out the particular vapor pressures at particular temperatures for different liquids? Can you analyze the strength of the intermolecular attractive forces of these different liquids? If you can, then you're doing all right. 
If you have any questions about any of these things, take a moment and write them down. You can always leave them in the comments below the video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.